Are you looking to play No Man's Sky but find the experience too daunting to even try? Maybe there's just too many features being thrown at you that simply go over your head or maybe you find the starting hours a bit too tedious. Well, if that's you, I have the perfect video and the solution for your problems because this is basically my ultimate beginner's guide. Unless Hello Games changes anything again, but this is my optimized run whenever I start a new playthrough and trust me, I do that quite often, so let's begin. And what's better reason to start playing than a 55% discount using my code CRAZENMS over at GOG.com. We're officially partnered with them for the month of June, and this is the only way you can get No Man's Sky this cheap off their website for a limited time. Now, as soon as you jump in, there's a few game modes to pick between. There's normal mode, which is the basic default experience where most people choose to play into. Then there's survival, the hard mode, where you get more challenges, more hazards, smaller inventory size, and finally there's permadeath, one step above that in terms of difficulty, as the name implies, you just have one life, so if you die at any point, you pretty much lose all progress and have to start from the very beginning. Finally, we have creative mode, this is the super easy mode, you don't have to collect any resources and everything you can craft comes for free. I'm not going to talk about community expeditions as I've talked about those before, but I am going to choose the normal mode since this is where most people choose to play into. Nonetheless, as soon as I load in the planet, there's a few resources I keep an eye out for. One of them is one of these rocks that provide ferrite dust and also paying attention to plants that provide carbon, both needed actually for repairing and creating other items a bit later down the line. Now, at some point, you might have noticed that my beam changes color the more I use it, from green to yellow all the way up to red. Well, this also serves as a visual indicator to tell you that the beam is overheating and will eventually enter a cooldown. As it overheats, it also increases its damage output. This basically means you're going to be able to collect resources much faster, about twice as fast as with a green beam. So my suggestion is to constantly hover between 80, maybe 90, all the way up to 100 in beam intensity, but never stay too much over 100 for more than like a split second. Otherwise, you're going to enter a cooldown. And this in turn will provide you these resources at a much faster rate. Once you have acquired at least a few hundred in ferrite dust and carbon, you will want to go ahead and just fix your multi-tool scanners. Once you've done that, you're going to be able to press C and then just reveal many of the nearby resources and other points of interest, including your ship. Pay close attention to the glowing crystals, especially the ones with the color yellow and blue at the time being. The yellow ones are the sodium plants. These are very important as these are the main way now to fix your shield so that you can protect yourself against environmental hazards. Meanwhile, the blue ones are the dihydrogen crystals and these are important so that you can power up your ship thrusters to lift off the planet. Now, at some point, it's very likely you're going to stumble upon one of these caves or two and I heavily encourage you to go inside because these provide the shelter, they replenish your HP and shield bar and the reason I'm here is also because of these cobalt crystals. This is an amazing early on money making method, it takes just a few minutes to collect a few hundred of them and you can pretty much then sell it to afford a lot of the starting upgrades and items that you will need in your journeys. So spend a few minutes over there, collect all of that until you have like 500 plus and then head over to your ship. Now on your way towards your broken ship, you might encounter one of these blue plants called a deuterium plant. I heavily encourage you to grab these as soon as you see them because it gives you 10 seconds of infinite jetpack fuel so you can basically jetpack for a lot longer for those 10 seconds so you can cover a lot more distance. Once you reach your ship, just interact with the drone. This is going to open up the quest line and the path towards some of the later items and rewards. But before you move into your ship, also open up all of these crates you see, especially the red and the green ones. Specifically for the green ones, make sure you grab the rusted metal. Don't throw it because we can break this down into a lot of ferrite dust that we no longer need to collect by mining. And there's also some other resources inside, including in that yellow box. Finally, also open up the damage machinery, just like in the previous one, you're gonna get a really awesome reward, which can either be some nanites, or if you're lucky enough, it could definitely be an upgrade module, in this case, for me, it was a max rank one. 
Speaking of modules, you can go ahead and apply this right away. And since this is a life support one, I put it right next to my life support to also take advantage of the adjacency bonus. Basically, not only do you get those listed in the stats screen, but also additional ones that we can see, but we know they are there once they are close to the primary upgrade module. Anyway, from this point on, it's just a matter of going into your ship, following the dialogues and opening up the quest line further, which is also going to tell you that your thrusters and your engine is broken. Now, luckily, we did get one of the necessary materials from the green box, which is the dihydrogen jelly. But if you did not get one, you can always craft it with the dihydrogen we already got on the way. So since I already have that, I'm just going to craft one of these metal platings and this is going to let me repair half of each of these items. Before we move over, I'm going to also install an analysis visor to my multi-tool. It only requires one carbon nanotube, which requires carbon to craft, so that's super easy. And this not only gives me the possibility to use my binoculars, but also opens up that mini map HUD at the top of the screen so that I can see my ship and other locations much easier. There's another reason why we use that, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. In the meantime, we did get a planetary chart from the main quest line. These are quite important as they reveal points of interest. In this case, pointing me towards the item I need in order to fix my ship. So I'm just going to head over there again, taking advantage of these deuterium plants to cover the distance much easier. By the way, on the same subject of navigation, another quick tip, if you were wondering what this animation is here that I'm doing, it's called the jetpack thrust. Basically, we're using a melee attack with a jetpack thrust while sprinting to launch our character further and cover a lot more distance. While sprinting, simply start with a melee attack and then immediately follow up with a jetpack thrust and this is going to throw you a lot further, thus covering distance much easier. At some point along the way, you will likely hear one of these messages. So basically, this one will alert you of an incoming storm and you might be tempted to just find a shelter and wait it inside. Well, in this case, I'm not gonna do that. I am just going to grab the item I need to repair my ship and I will be traveling through the storm. And here is the next tip. Whenever there's a heated storm, this is going to give a major bonus to your jetpack in terms of recovery time and how much fuel you can consume. Don't ask me about the physics of it, but basically your jetpack can convert that extreme heat into more fuel so that you can now jetpack for much longer and have a much lower cooldown on it, which is why I'm able to just travel back to my ship much faster than otherwise. Once I'm back to the ship, I'm able to apply the hermetic seal to fully fix my pulse engine and the only thing remaining are the thrusters. Now for this, I will need some pure ferrite. So this means we're gonna have to just go ahead and yeah, refine some of the ferrite dust that I have. To do that, we need a portable refiner. This requires both oxygen and metal plating. If this is the first playthrough, oxygen will be quite abundant around your ship as there's gonna be about four plants that always spawn no matter what at the start of the game, so make sure you grab those and the metal plating can be easily crafted with the ferrite dust that you have. Now, remember how I told you that the rusted metal is very useful? Well, in the portable refiner, we can break all of that down in ferrite dust at a 1 to 2 ratio. So that comes in quite handy. And then we can also refine the ferrite dust resulting into pure ferrite to also fix our thrusters. While all of that is processing in the refiner, there is one more thing I suggest doing in the downtime, and that is to use your analysis visor to scan any nearby flora and fauna. Not only does this give you extra units, it also counts towards the planetary survey, and it's also useful for extra resources, especially for some of these plants and rocks that might list a secret bonus beneath the primary one with several question marks. If you scan that item, you're going to be able to collect both resources at the same time, so that can come quite in handy. With that being said, we're pretty much done here and ready to lift off, but there's one final thing I like doing, and since our packs are almost filled, 
I always like moving all of my texts and upgrades into the technology screen. In this case, pretty much freeing up a lot of inventory slots so that we can place other materials inside of it. You can't put those in technology slots, so that's the reason why I'm doing it. And I'm repeating the same process in the Starship menu as well. From this point on, if you're playing on keyboard and mouse, you can also maybe quick bind a few of the quick menu actions, like for example, being able to enter the photo mode or changing from the first person to the third person, changing your multi tools when you have more and so on and so forth. Even gestures can be put and bound to quick menu shortcuts. Now, in this case, we're gonna head over back in space, which is going to progress further in our quest line and reveal a new waypoint. There's another thing that I recommend doing in this case if you want to like kind of get a bit more resources on the way and that's to farm a few of these asteroid fields. You get a lot of resources including the tritium needed for your pulse engine but also quite a lot of gold, silver and other valuable resources you can sell for some extra units later down the line. For now though we're gonna just follow the main quest line which is gonna bring us to another broken machinery. Upon inspecting it this is gonna give us two very important blueprints. One of them is for a base computer and the second one is going to be for a terrain manipulator that you will need to grab the resource needed to build that base computer. Now there's two ways in which you can proceed from here, one being the easy mode and the other one being the hard mode. So the easy mode to craft the base computer which requires chromatic metal is to just scrap the rocket launcher on your ship which is going to give you the copper needed to refine into chromatic metal and you get plenty of that as it is. The alternative is to go ahead and craft one of these terrain manipulators and then look up for copper deposits. They look something like this on your scanners. I'm not going to travel over there but I will give you the example that you need to be the most efficient with the resource collecting. So when you reach that don't put your manipulator beam on the max bubble size because that's going to be really inefficient. As you can see I've just destroyed a huge chunk of it but only got two points of this resource resource. Instead make sure that you pick the smallest bubble over here because this is going to be the most efficient way to collect as much resource as possible. And from this point on whichever route you picked just slap that copper into your refiner and turn it into chromatic metal. Now your option from here on is to either build a base on your starting planet, if you like it go ahead and do so, but personally I'm just gonna go in space and see what other planets we have. In this case I highly encourage you to yeah just use photo mode and adjust the sun positioning to see what type of planet you have around you. In this case there's two ugly planets that I don't really want to be on, but I presume that's gonna be a paradise one so I will be heading over there right away. So yeah, it definitely is a paradise planet, so I'm just gonna pick a random place and I will be placing my base computer in, yeah, well in this case, a location that I find quite nice. Once that is over, the base computer archives are now accessible and this is going to give you new materials and new blueprints every couple of hours. The first ones given are going to be the basic timber walls and other floor panels. So yeah, in this case, we had hundreds of carbon, so we have more than enough to go ahead and build our first house. Don't go overboard with it, it's not worth it, just build a one by one, so place just one of these floors with about four of these walls and then a rooftop and you're good. This is going to provide you everything you need in the starting stages without breaking the bank. Now from this point on, I can sit inside and pretty much access my terminal without going into the hazardous environment or whatever other store might be happening. Which is why I'm also using the build camera and then pressing B so that I can exit without using my character movement but only the build camera. That also comes in quite handy which is why I'm placing some of these other resource generators just outside of the door. In any case, because we collected so many resources in the starting stages, we are able to afford whatever the game requires us, us to build. In this case, we need to craft a construction research unit for which I have refined some of my starting materials to get the magnetized ferrite and the carbon nanotube in order to afford that. From this point on, this is going to be the main way in which you will unlock various base parts and this is basically the way in which you're going to open up base building from this point on outside of going to the space anomaly. So like other walls, other decorations and everything else in between which is also going to cost 
salvage data. You will need quite a few of those, so open up your analysis visor and pay attention to these icons that point you towards buried technology modules. You can use your terrain manipulator to dig them up, and this is going to give you anywhere between 1 to 3, sometimes even 4 of these tag modules that you need to unlock those blueprints. So I will repeat this a number of times until I get at least 10 of them and then head over back to the base. By the way, another quick tip, if you happen to be caught up by another storm and don't want to get damaged, you can simply use your terrain manipulator to build up your own cave and protect yourself from the environmental hazards. This is a really good way of doing just that. But once you're back to this terminal, this is what I would unlock first and yeah, what the game requires you to do anyway. So the base teleporter module is going to be the most important over here. We also need to power that up. So we're getting a biofuel reactor, which yeah, unfortunately we need to get to unlock some of the other stuff later down the line, including yeah, just having normal cables and finally even the solar panels and the battery. Now, the game, unfortunately, in the starting stages requires you to power this up with a biofuel reactor, which unfortunately is very inconvenient and not efficient at all because it actively burns fuel like carbon or oxygen. So what I prefer doing instead is to couple this with a solar panel and a battery to create a fully autonomous setup that runs 24-7 around the clock. In this case, I will be placing the solar panel on the rooftop. This will generate enough electricity during the day to fully power up this teleporter and then some. But since my solar panel generates enough electricity than I need for this terminal, I can also store the remaining one in a battery, which is why I'm also building one and connecting it directly to the solar panel. So this, if you also connect it back to the terminal, will ensure that it's getting powered up during the day by the solar panel and then during the night by the energy stored in the battery, pretty much running it 24-7 automatically and I can still connect a lot of other appliances and computers to it because there's plenty of spare energy left. From this point on, any other space station, location or even other base you build, be it yours or some of the other players, will appear in this list right here and you can freely teleport between them as long as your teleporter is active and has enough power. But on a final note, the only thing remaining is to head over to the space station and get rid of any access resources and make some of the money needed early on. In this case, my ship requires some fuel, so I'm crafting a quick, well, starship launcher fuel using the dihydrogen we have and ferrite dust for the metal plating. From this point on, heading over to the space station, the first thing I do is to sell my resources to the terminal, especially the cobalt, the gold, the silver, and some of the other items, which amounts to a few hundred thousand units, which is plenty enough for the early stage of the game. From this point on, you will literally not have to mine a day in your life if you do this properly, because you're going to be able to now afford many of these resources right from the space station terminal. And by the way, one thing I recommend in case you don't find carbon but find plenty of oxygen, you can break down oxygen straight into carbon as a one-to-one -one ratio should you need that and if you're lazy to yeah, collect any of these plants. At the same time, I would also suggest paying attention to some of the upgrade module vendors, especially the one for your jetpack. Right next to him, there's a terminal that sells you one inventory upgrade slot, so I suggest buying it as much as you can. And then also pay attention to what he or she might sell, especially when it comes to movement modules. These are definitely useful, but they do require nanites in order to purchase. And from this point on, yeah, you pretty much have everything unlocked, everything set up. The only final thing I'm doing here is to make sure that I'm uploading this base and giving it a name so that I can know in the future what type of base is and where it came from when I will have a lot more bases in the universe of No Man's Sky. But this is it with the ultimate beginner's guide. There's going to be a lot more advanced tips and tricks coming up on the channel. So if you want to see more of that, definitely go ahead and let me know by leaving a like on this video, subscribing and maybe even activating the notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.